Over most of Earth's surface, the sea is all there is. It's unlike anything found on land. Animals that live on land cannot survive in the sea for long, just as most sea creatures cannot survive on land or in freshwater upland from the sea. Yet all life is linked to both. Even creatures living in the murky depths of the deepest oceans receive energy from organic material that drifts down from above, passed along through an endless food chain that begins where the sea meets the land. At the water's edge, plant and animal life come together in Earth's most important biosystem, the wetland. Wetlands make up a relatively small part of Earth's total surface. Only a fourth of the Earth is covered by land, and of that, wetlands comprise just 6%. Seaside wetlands, critical to the survival of most species of ocean fish, occupy less than one-half of 1% 1 of Earth's surface. Wetlands include bogs, where high acid content in the wet soil sustains certain plants that occur only here. Marshes are another type of wetland, low-lying areas repeatedly inundated by flooding from rising ocean tides, rain or snowmelt. Wetlands include swamps, areas of permanent standing water, often with tall stands of dead trees that provide specialized habitat for certain birds and other wildlife. Another wetland system is the wet meadow, open grassland rooted in saturated soil. Seldom is there standing water here, but where it lies just beneath the surface, cattails and other waterside plants find a home. All wetlands result from a variety of persistent conditions and the degree to which those conditions fluctuate and the degree to which the underlying soil is saturated at any given time and for how long. Other factors include geology, the types of minerals and nutrients present, the nature of the rock and soil that underlie a particular region. Where certain conditions are persistent over time, stable plant and animal habitats occur. Plants are self-sustaining producers that collect energy from the sun and nutrients from the soil, converting them to forage for consumers. Animals, birds, fish and insects are energy consumers that feed on plants and other consumers farther down the food chain. Eventually these consumers return energy and nutrients to the system for recycling yet again. Microorganisms in water and soil most so small they are invisible to the human eye, are decomposers that break down dead organic material into basic elements, allowing the process to go on indefinitely. Nowhere do producers, consumers, and decomposers interact more efficiently than in wetlands. On the ocean beach, Shorebirds, willets, wimbrels, plovers, and terns feeding on shellfish and other marine organisms. In one of the most inhospitable environments on Earth, certain plants withstand relentless sun, salt spray, and pounding waves. A clutch of American beach grass, animated by the ocean breeze, leaves a temporary trace upon the ever-shifting sand.
sea oats. These tall producers put down deep roots. Sea oats hold the dune line together and provide forage for small animals and songbirds. Just behind the dune, a different habitat. Waxy-leafed pennywort and fruit-bearing yaupon provide shelter and food for a completely different collection of wildlife. A few yards further inland, shallow pools collect rainwater. Black skimmers and waders gather to feast on insects, small fish, crabs, and other marine life. Songbirds drift in and out with changes in the weather and the cycling of the seasons. In this Soundside salt marsh, cord grass and black needle rush thrive where the sand meets the tidal flow. Egrets and tricolored herons navigate the rise and fall of this daily flood as they feed. As the tide recedes, fiddler crabs emerge to glean bits of organic material left behind. In some coastal areas, it's not clear where the sea ends and the land begins. Here, Salt water mixes with fresh water from upland rivers and streams, a condition called brackish. This is a transition zone, home to yet another distinct plant and animal habitat. Some plants and animals, like this gadwall, live in both brackish and freshwater environments. Biologists have determined that many animals have special glands that filter out toxic salt. In fact, freshwater marshes and streams far from the sea often teem with birds in summer, at winter on ocean bays and brackish estuaries. <laughs> <laughs> 